here we are one more time in High Point, North Carolina, Free Church. We welcome those of you who have made it this morning and those of you who are attending online as well. We thank you for uh, visiting with us and being in touch with us this morning. I pray that you'll be blessed by the service, all with the worship and the praise and the word of God. I'd like to talk to you this morning briefly, according to what we were speaking about last week. Um, last week I brought this concept, this question to the church to the people, the body of Christ, and the question was, what after Easter? What after the Resurrection Sunday? What happens after that? Is it that we just wait another year to, have to celebrate again resurrection? Or is there actually something that happens after resurrection that we are living in today? And so the concept was that according to what I read to you in John chapter 20, it was a concept that Jesus would say to the people, to his disciples, that he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. That's what we read last week. That's what we read last week. So I'd like for you to stand up with me this, this morning because we're going to read from Psalm 103. Why are we going to read from Psalm 103? I'll tell you why. Because we are the recipients of some benefits. Can I get it? I got one amen. Thank you, sister. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Let me say it again. We are the recipients of the benefits of the resurrection. Listen, before us, the people before us couldn't get what we got. Before us, the people before resurrection did not have what we have. And so there are some benefits to being post-resurrection. And we are the recipients of those benefits. So I want to read Psalm 103 because it's written by David, right? King David. And this psalm is written at the time when King David in, uh, in 1 Samuel chapter 17 says that he was, he was depressed, but he encouraged himself in the Lord. I want to encourage you this morning that you have some benefits that maybe you don't know you're entitled to. David reads them. This is how it reads. Psalm 103. Most of us probably know it. It says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Can I ask you this question? Who is David talking to? Himself. He said, who is he telling to bless the Lord? Himself. My soul. My soul. My soul. Your soul. He said, the first thing you should do is your, your soul needs to be blessing the Lord on this day. But it wasn't enough that he said it once. He'll say it twice. He said, oh, bless the Lord, I said, oh, my soul. And forget not all of his benefits. We're going to take sanctuary. We're going to take the, the bread and the, and the juice today. And these are symbols of our benefits. Those are a reminder of our benefits. He says, and then he recounts what those benefits are. You ready? You ready to get excited? All right, this first thing he says, who forgave all my iniquities. Woo! Who healed all my disease. Woo! Who redeemed my life from destruction. Oh, who crowned me with loving kindness and tender mercy. Go ahead, Lord. Who satisfies my mouth with good things. Oh, my goodness. So that your youth is renewed like that of the eagles. The Lord executes righteousness, the justice for all who are oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the children of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in mercy. He will not always strive with us, nor will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, thank God Almighty, and nor punished us according to our iniquity, for as heaven for as the heaven are high above the earth, so great is his mercy towards those who fear him. As far, listen to this, as far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgression from us. I don't know if you caught that. I don't know if you caught that. But my hands would say, as far as the east is from the west. It is finished. We are the recipients of God's promises. Come on, let's praise Him this morning. Hallelujah. One more time. Give Him praise like never before. Glory to God. Free, I 
picked me up, turned me around. You set my feet on the soft ground. Yours
everything I need. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. You're all that we need. Hallelujah. You're everything, oh God. the king of my heart be the mountain where I run, the fountain I drink from, oh, he is my son. And let the king of my heart be the shadow where I am, the ransom for my life, oh, he is my son. Cause you are You are good, you're good, oh, you are good, you're good, oh, and let the king of my heart be the wind inside my sails, the anchor in the waves, oh, he is my song, and let the king again. So let the king of my heart be the wind inside my sails. It's the anchor in the waves. Oh, he is my soul. And let the king of my heart be the fire inside my veins. He's the
Cause you are good, you're good. Cause you are good, you're good. Yes, you are good, you're good. Oh, you are good, you're good.
Yes, that's a good place right there to put your hands together and bless the Lord this morning. Worthy. Come on, somebody say worthy. Worthy. You're wondering, some of you might be wondering, why are we clapping in the middle of that? Because we're clapping to the worthy one. We're, we're not just singing about it, but we're doing some action. That's what Joseph was talking about in the beginning of the service when he was talking about what were they doing? They weren't just talking about it anymore. There was action behind it. Amen. They weren't just listening to Jesus talk about worshiping the Father. Now they're doing it themselves. And that's what I really sense the Holy Spirit bringing us to and bringing us to this new thing that God is, is birthing within us. We always have our communion the first Sunday of the month. Some of you have been coming to church with us now for about four or five, six weeks, and some of people are going to come in here in just a moment. They're going to be here for the first time. And so we're always giving an explanation so everybody's on the same page. That's what we're doing, especially those of you that are watching online. We're seeing that we get new viewers every week, and so we're inviting you to participate with us during this communion service. You say, Pastor, I don't have the wine. I don't have the juice. Just pick up whatever you can out of your refrigerator. Because we're going to dedicate this that we're doing. It's just juice in a, in a cup. And it's bread to the natural eye. But the Bible says that when we dedicate or consecrate or give something over to the hands of the Lord, there is what we teach in the church called transubstantiation. It begins to take place. It all of a sudden takes off the natural and puts on the spiritual. And so we're doing what Jesus told us to do this morning. He said, remember me. And he told us how to do it. He said, take a cup and have some juice inside of it or some wine. He said, take a piece of bread. And how many of you know because we're, we've been in this pandemic, we're, we're wrapping up some bread and we're wrapping up some cups. Well, oh, they, they, they loosened it up this morning. Yeah. Freedom, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Worthy you, worthy you. power that was in Jesus Amen. is in you. Now, church, I don't know if you understand, but that's the reason you should be here this morning. You can go anywhere and hear a good concert. You can go anywhere and hear good music. You can go hear an orator speak, but you can't go get around the resurrection of power of Jesus in a congregation form except you assemble with the saints who have been delivered and washed in the blood. Amen? <laughs> it just doesn't work that way. And I'm so reminded of Jesus' power in His words. He said, this is my body. 
For as often as you do eat this bread, you show forth or you remember or with passion. I love some of the translations. With passion, you think about me until I come again. And let's eat together today and let's celebrate not only our natural life, but let's celebrate our spiritual life in Him. Let's celebrate like it could be the last communion that we would take. Wow. Mm. We would even say, even so come Lord Jesus. Have your way, Lord. That's what makes it, Lord. Have your way with my life. And now we come to the cup. Many times the Holy Spirit threads and unites and brings a service together. You think about the exhortation that Joseph gave in the beginning. He hadn't talked to me. We, we have to say this because a lot of people are wondering, what are y'all doing over there? How are you knitting? I even was questioned on Facebook, but y'all plan your services? Do you guys know what you're going to say? No, not really. We just walk with the Holy Spirit. But I heard Joseph talk about the benefits, the benefits of the cross, the benefits of the blood, the benefit package that Jesus gave you over and beyond your salvation package. You're alive and well today. You get to experience all the benefits of the Lord. Can I say this to you as a pastor? Don't ever take God's benefit package for granted. Don't ever just let that be nonchalant in your life. Don't ever come to this communion table and let it just be just another moment. Let it be a new moment, a fresh moment. Let it be an empowering moment in your life. You know, we say this all the time, and those of you watching online, I feel led to say this to you. You're looking for a church where my kids can come in and take communion because some places they can't take the cup. They can't, they can't take communion until they're 8, 10, or 12, or whatever. We're not at free church. How in the world will we teach our kids how to follow Jesus if we tell them they can't follow Him while they're 5 and 6 and 7 and 8 and 9? you got to reach some place to where you don't spill juice on the carpet. If any kid spills juice on the carpet, get it up, please. Amen? If they crack bread all over, then just go find a vacuum cleaner and vacuum it up. But do not, do not keep the children from coming to the feet of Jesus and experiencing what we experience. Father, we love you and we thank you for your son. Thank you for the sacrifice you gave us, Jesus. And we promise you we will forever have covenant with you, remember you. You will be passionate in our lives. We will not nonchalantly come to your table, nor to your house, nor to your word, nor to your spirit. Because they're treasures in our life. We love you, we praise you, and what a joy it is. Come on, raise your cup good and high and say it with me. I'm not ashamed. Of the blood of Jesus Christ, it has the power to wash away all my sin. Make me new. Look at somebody and make the declaration. Tell them, say, I'm new. I'm new in Jesus. Come on, celebrate. Celebrate. Do you know how to celebrate? Hey! Do you know how to celebrate? Hey! Is he worthy?
worthy of all your praise? Is he worthy of your prayer life? Is he worthy of your finance? Is he worthy of you serving someone? Is he worthy of you telling somebody else about the salvation experience that you have in your own life? We'll talk about that this morning. It's very important. Jesus left us here for a reason. And he left us here to go tell somebody about how awesome and how worthy and how powerful and how good he is. Amen. We're coming around right now picking up your little, your little cups. Here you go. Thank you very much. And, well, how many of you know this is the day the Lord has made? And you are to rejoice. And you're to be glad. Now, some of you, I've been watching you, and you haven't even smiled the whole time during communion. I'm going to give you an opportunity right now to back up and repent and smile at somebody and say, you know what? I'm worthy because he made me worthy. Tell somebody. Tell somebody. Oh, yes, we're worthy. We're worthy. We're worthy. We're worthy. <laughs> worthy you are, worthy you will be forever, Yahweh. Worthy you are, worthy you are, worthy you will be forever, getting ready to be 62 years old I'm, I mean I'm going to be 63 but I'm 62 now and I want you to make this declaration because I'm going to set you free this morning tell somebody say pastor gets to be 62 years old thank you thank you God bless you thank you God bless you amen Shelly you've been coming here for a while now and I feel like I'm becoming your pastor I want you to come down here for just a minute because I, I want you to share this beautiful gift that you have. Okay? You ready? Here we go. Just turn around, ready? Here we go. Worthy. Do it. Do it. Worthy. Come on, do it. Worthy you will be forever, Yahweh. Worthy you are. Worthy you are. Worthy you will be forever. name those that are watching online right now i prophesy there's going to be hundreds if not thousands that are going to be watching this online service and they're going to be able to see because i got news for you god's not finished with you in fact he's just beginning with you he's just beginning with you he's going to use that gift to minister to hundreds if not thousands of people whether it's online whether it's in here whether it's during a teaching we must minister to every person in the world. And that includes those who are lame and those who are deaf and those who are blind. And when you really start crying out for God to use you, He will use you just like Jesus was used. Jesus healed the sick. Jesus raised the dead. Jesus opened the eyes of the blind. And they tried to put it on Jesus and said, well, you know, you're the light of the world. And Jesus turned around and said, hold on just a minute. I'm getting ready to leave here. You're the salt of the earth. You're the light of the world. Go out and heal the sick, raise the dead, open the eyes of the blind, cause the deaf ears to open. In my name, nothing shall be impossible for you. I'm telling you right now, I'm just looking for the church that's going to believe that and start doing it. And I believe that Free Church could be 
one of those churches, if not the beginning of the church. But somebody is going to get a hold of that revelation and they're going to stop walking in fear and doubt and they're going to start laying hands on the sick and watch them recover. They're not going to have to write a book, do a movie. They don't need an accolade. All they want to do is just do the work of the ministry and do what Jesus called them to do. Amen? Amen. Amen. Turn around and look at somebody and say, today's going to be a great service. It's going to be good. Hey, Joseph. I, w- I want to expound on that benefit concept. Many of us try to get a job with benefits. If you don't get benefits in your job, that's not the job you want. You want a job with benefits. You want a job that would have a benefit of life insurance, a job that would have benefit of health insurance, and a job that would have 401K, retirement. Well, I got good news for you. Jesus Christ already gives you a life insurance, eternal. He gives you a health insurance, healing, and he gives you a 401K, prosperity. So if any benefits, we have the benefits. I want you to understand this. You got to grab this thing, right? It ain't like something like you got to apply for. It's already given. It's signed, sealed, and delivered in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, No, don't clap halfway. Clap right. Come on, clap right. My goodness. That's some good stuff. Hey, I don't know. That that blessed me, Joseph. (laughs) My goodness. Well, it's good to see all you guys out today. And did you have a great Resurrection Sunday in life? And and, uh, we've, we've got new life around the church right now. Um, we've got a baby nursery that's getting ready to just explode. And um, we have some new folks that are, are hitting us online and people that are talking to us. And, and you just keep inviting. Just keep inviting. Don't worry about who's showing up, who's not. Just keep inviting. Just be that witness that God called you to be. And God will honor his word. God will do the work. Amen? Um, did you notice all of the material that's in the back of the church, if you go out the back door, you're going to see a lot of metal laying in the parking lot. There is uh, the landlord who owns this building is getting ready to build a large building in the back, a huge building in the back. And uh, we're asking the Lord, Lord, is that part of our journey? Is that part of where, where we're going? Is that part of what? Wouldn't it be awesome? Can you dream with me for about 15 seconds? Wouldn't it be awesome if the church had to meet over there and this was just turned over into a youth facility? Just a youth center where the kids could come be dropped off and somebody be here to teach them and walk them and tutor them and, and they would be able to come here and have their own services and, and be able to just do whatever they want to do. I promise you the walls would not remain white. They'd probably go black or purple or pink or yellow or something. About it. But that would be all right. We wouldn't have any problems with that because we are called to reach out to a generation that is lost. We're not called to reach out to a generation that is saved. I want to say that to you again. We're called to reach the lost, not to reach the saved. The saved are supposed to be reaching us, but it's the lost who don't know how to reach us that we're supposed to go out and reach the lost. And so I want to encourage you today as you hear the word, In just a few moments, we got some preliminaries to do. But as you hear the word in a few moments, that you take some notes today and you write this scripture down. It's going to be on the PowerPoint, but I'd love to see some of you typing it out on your phone or or putting it in a pencil form or something. I mean, just really digging deep down into the word and letting this thing become resonant in you. Let it become life in you. Let it become rhema. Let it become life giving in you to where it changes your life again forever. Because God is doing something new. There's no doubt that when you look across the scope of the world, God is doing something new. He's up to something. And I knew this. Uh, some of us that were brought up in the, in the old church, we've been taught this. We've known this. There comes a time where God says, you know what? I'm not going to tell you nothing. I'm not going to reveal anything to you. I've already given you a sign, and I've already given you a little bit. But when I get ready to do this one, I'm going to do this one all by myself. I'm just going to do it whether you're part of it or whether you're not. And that's why the Bible says this, and I repeat it, that we are to be ready. Everybody say, be ready. Ready. Come on, say it. And say it like you believe it. Say, be ready. Be ready. Because you do not know what I'm going to do in the next hour. Here's the interpretation. For in the hour that you think you know not, you don't know what I'm going to do, the Lord said. 
You don't know what I'm going to pour out revival. You don't know when I'm going to allow broken hearts to fall out on the street. You don't know when you're going to walk through Walmart and somebody's going to fall out in the Holy Spirit simply because you walked in as a Spirit-filled believer. You do not know. You say, Pastor, that's really weird. I don't want to go back to those weird times. I don't know. I think I'd like to trade some weird stuff for some crazy non-common sense stuff that I'm watching around, going around the earth today. Amen? I think it would be all right. I think it would be okay if our kids were in high school again, getting ready to graduate, and they walked across the platform, and right as they got their diploma, they just fell out in the spirit. I think that'd be all right. I think that would be good. I think that would be great news. It would be worthy of, uh, of uh, attention. So uh, are you glad that you are in God's house today? Is God doing something great, awesome in your life? Well, good. Well, one of the greatest things that we can do is we can praise God for victories. And I want you, before we receive the tithe and the offering today, before we go any further, I just want you, if God has done anything that you would consider grandiose, mammoth, large, big, that God has brought a deliverance, God has brought a financial blessing, God has answered a prayer that is big in a huge way. I just want you to get up and stand up on your feet right now and bear witness to that before we get ready to give. Ready? One, two, three, go. I'm up. (laughs) Look, look around you. Look around you. Look around you. Look around you. In this little fellowship, look around you at the favor, the power, and the provision of God that is in this house. Now, how many of you are learning more and more, and you're, you're learning like I am? It doesn't have to stop, so I'm just going to keep on going. I'm going to keep on going. Now, those of you that are sitting down that didn't feel like you could stand up, why don't you just grab the shirt of somebody else the next time and say, I'm next. <laughs> Just hang on. Amen? Hang on. Come on. Ready? Receive? I'm ready to give this morning. I don't know how to give the new way, so I guess I'll have to give the old way until we can give the new way. No, you're going to learn today. You're going to learn today. (laughs) Out with the old, in with the new, to some degree. No, you can always still give through the receptacles at the front of the back. That's always welcome. Uh, As you know, we've got multiple ways that you can give to the church. Um, I'm not going to go through them all, but they're up on the screen. And if you can't catch them off of that screen... We've also got the little ones out there on the table when you walk in the foyer. Scan the little barcode. It's going to pull up a link on your phone. It'll take you right to it. Also, good news, the church app is done, finished. So that's good news. However, we're not releasing it to you guys yet because guess what? We're not a whoop, there it is, church. Uh, We're going to make sure the thing works like it's supposed to before we turn it over to you guys. So uh, I believe Preston and Tara are going to be testing that out this week, and then we should have it ready to release uh, hopefully next week. But uh, great things are happening. Uh, We're trying to make things as comfortable for you guys, but more importantly, as comfortable for new people when they come in as possible, right? So if there's anything that you think that we should be doing slightly different now, don't give us all these crazy comments, but if there's anything you think we should be changing or updating or improving on, just leave us a comment card. We'll do our best to make sure that it's getting taken care of. Um, But God is good. And he's going to take care of this church, and he's blessed us to be able to do a lot of things. There's some more exciting things coming, but I can't tell you about them yet. But they're coming. They're coming. The pastor don't even know about some of them. We like to keep him guessing, too. Right? So all kinds of great things coming to this church body. God is blessing us over and beyond. Aren't you glad that God blesses us with somebody that can come in and speak when pastor has to be away? Whether it be Joseph or Pastor Mike Praler or somebody else from another body that God has dropped on us so that we can receive a word. Pastor Mike did a great job last week, gave us a good word that was right on time with this church body. It's not just a word that's just out from left field somewhere that somebody dropped in here. It's a word that goes right along with what we've been talking about. And usually 9.999%, uh, nine times out of 10, pastor doesn't tell that pastor what he spoke on. They don't watch our service because they have their own church body. So God just does it, right? Won't he do it? Amen. So let's just go ahead and pray over our tithe and offering. Let's spend a little bit of time just saying thanks, not asking him for anything, but just thanks. Thank you, God, for giving us all a chance to come into your house, God. Thank you, God, for giving us a place to worship you. Thank you, God, for giving us transportation or a way to get here. Thank you, God, for your word. Thank you, God, for the music that you've given us this morning, God. We thank you, God, for allowing us to be free to worship you. 
Now, most of all, God, we just thank you for your son who has been given for us. Now we ask, God, that you bless everything that we do, God, so that we can continue to do what you've asked us to do. We just thank you, Father, and we give you all the glory for all of it. In your name we pray. Amen. Preston's going to come give us a few more words, and then we'll turn it over to Pastor. Well, good morning. I hope you're excited about being here. You're going to have more reasons to be excited as we uh, talk to you a little bit more about the things that we have put together. As you've got your coffee this morning, and if you've been looking at the slides this morning, you probably noticed some men's group slides up there, ladies' group slides that are up there, slides for prayer. Um, we want you to know that there's a place for you here at Free Church. And the church is more than just what we do here on Sunday morning. That's the exciting part. That's the fellowship part. That's the worship part. But we do a whole lot more during the week, and there's a lot more to come. So we want you to know that there's going to be, I had somebody come up to me today and say, I want to find my fit. Well, guess what? We're going to help you. We're going to help you find your fit. You're like a puzzle. Everyone's like a puzzle in the, in the house of God, and you got to find out where you fit, right? We're going to help you do that. So in the, in the next few weeks, uh, myself, pastor, some of the leaders of the church will be talking about some new programs that we're going to have for you to plug in. If you want to know more, you want to you take that plow and put a little bit deeper into the ground as far as the word goes, we're going to have a place for you to do that. If you feel like, hey, I don't feel like I know that much about the Bible and I feel like everybody else in the room might know a lot about the Bible. Well, guess what? You're not alone. I can tell you there's folks that are sitting in this room right now that don't know as much as you think or maybe on the same level as you. Lord knows he's going to bless our body no matter what. But there's going to be some classes for you to plug into that are going to put that plow a little bit deeper into the ground that is going to give you some more knowledge to where you feel comfortable talking with somebody. Because the number one reason that people don't witness is because they just don't feel like they know enough to talk to somebody about it. And really, it should just be us talking to someone about our best friend, right? And you need to come meet my best friend. Who's your best friend? Jesus, right? Faith is something, faith is not a one-time event for us as believers. It's a daily practice that we do day after day after day. It's not a, the Bible says that it, faith is a practice that we should do and not just a one-time event. So we're going to talk with you through the different courses that are going to be offered. Faith is going to be a, a, a topic. Maybe you want to know about uh, foot washing. We, we talked about foot washing a few weeks ago. Maybe you, ha maybe you have some questions about that. Maybe you don't fully understand the sacrament of communion that we participated in this morning. We're going to talk to you about those things, and it's going to be a time of teaching. It's going to be a time of learning. It's going to be a time of fellowship, We're gonna, and we're very excited about it. Um, men's group, again, meets on Wednesday nights, 7 o'clock. John can give you more information on that. There is a ladies' fellowship that meets Friday mornings at 10 o'clock. If you want to know more about that, you can see Sister Shelley, and she will give you all the information about that. Prayer is every second Saturday of the month right here at the church. And then again, what I'm referring to as our Next Steps program, we'll be talking to you more about that in the weeks to come. At this time, I'm going to release the kids. I believe Caitlin's got the kids, so she's standing in the back. So kids, go ahead. You're free to go. And I'll bring Pastor up for the word. Give him a good hand as he comes. All right, so uh, did you enjoy Pastor Mike last week? Tell you what, he's a real man of God. He's uh, instant in season and out. Um, I just felt like it was the, his time for him to come by. I, I did tell him that I'm looking forward to the time when the Lord allows me to, um, to be here when he preaches. Um, but last week, uh, we went and we married off our niece, and um, went to Indianapolis, Indiana, um, and it was quite a journey. It was filled with a lot of excitement, a lot of surprises, and uh, but we came, we had the best time, and it was uh, neat watching uh, my niece, our niece, um, get married, watching her life starting to open up, and. Um, can I say this to you? You're gonna, you're, this is sort of a preamble to the message today. But never judge what's going on in your life by what's happening now in your life. Never. Never. Because it will always change. Especially if you get on a trajectory to where you can allow something higher than you, which we call God. Amen? 
How many of you know there's only one God? Look at your neighbors say there's only one God, and you're not him. <laughs> Amen? You got the picture? So if we allow him to take our life on a trajectory, then he'll always keep it on a straight. This is, this is not old-fashioned. He'll always keep it on a straight and narrow path. Now, why will he do that? Because, and I was, I was doing some, some marriage counseling, and I was helping these kids understand as they began, and, and I was talking to some, some other people that weren't married, and I said, do you understand? You are to be thankful for the straight and narrow way. Because, you see, this is God's way, and here's, here's the aisle, okay? And, and in the aisle, there's a lot of intersections. There's an intersection with that aisle. There's an intersection with that aisle, that aisle, and that aisle. And it's really simple because once you give your life to Jesus, you're no longer in control anymore. He's Lord of your life. And so I was telling this young couple, just get, on that, just get on God's path. Find out where God's path is for you. You know, I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, good, not evil, to give you a hope and a future. But you got to get on that path. And when you get on the path, all of a sudden you start walking in the path and an intersection in your life takes place and it's financial. It has to do with your job. And all of a sudden, you end up getting this incredible job, all right? And you're not even married yet. You don't even think about getting married. And you just keep right on walking, and all of a sudden, you get another blessing. Somebody offers you to go on a trip, or you just, all of a sudden, just keep getting blessed. Blessed coming in, blessed going out. That's what the Scripture says. But as you keep walking, and you think there's nothing for you, there's no future for you, there's no nothing for you, all of a sudden, you get this intersection that becomes a roadblock. Now, this, this is good. This, this is really good. I should charge a lot of money for this advice, but I'm not going to charge nothing for it. All of a sudden, you're just serving God, loving people, serving God, loving people, enjoying life, just serving God, loving people. And you come to this roadblock because here comes this beautiful man, this beautiful woman, and they get inside of your way. And you say, well, this is really good, but I need you to get out of the way. And God doesn't allow them to get out of the way because it's not just a roadblock. It is a destiny. God has now answered your prayers way back here. God has now heard all of your prayers about your job, about your finances, about your future, about your mate, about your marriage, about your children, all about your heart. All you have to, this is good stuff. All you have to do is get on the straight and narrow way and just start walking. Look at somebody and say, just start walking. That's all you have to do. Say, Pastor, is it really that? It is really that simple. And a lot of times in the pulpit, we complicate it. We make it so complicated that people can't understand it. And I think that in, as I'm going along and, 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 and shepherding in my, my later years, that I'm sensing the simplicity that really is in Scripture when you move all of the stuff away from it, it gets back to simplicity. It gets back to spiritual common sense. Whatever a man sows, that he's going to reap. And you can say yes, but until you really get out there and sow the apple seed and you say, Lord, I want bananas. You're not getting bananas with an apple seed. You have the wrong seed. You fuss about giving. Do you understand that giving is a seed? So you give it. Here's what you do. You give, you give your offering with an old angry, bitter spirit. I'm going to pay my rent. I'm going to pay my lights. I'm going to buy some groceries. I need gas for my car. But here it is, God. <laughs> now you. Wait a minute. Oh, pastor, I just gave to the Lord. No, wait a minute. Let's talk about it. You just gave a really angry, bitter, sour, nasty offering to God. Guess what you get to reap back? A real nasty offering, sour job. Do you understand? Whatever you're sowing in life, you're going to reap in life. That's why sow more smiles than you do frowns. Amen? So more compliments than you do complaints. <laughs> Amen. Where's the church? Maybe you're over here. Is the church over here? Where is the church this morning? 
All right, here we go. Do we got a slide? Do we have a slide up there today? Did we get that slide? We got it? Let's throw it up there. No, no, the slide. Do we have the slide? We don't have it? Okay. We'll have it next week, and we'll put it on Facebook. And everybody say this with me. The chosen generation. About four, six weeks ago, the Lord spoke to me, and he said, I know where I want you to go, and I know what I want you to do. And he said, I want you to find the plumb line, and I want you to put it back in its place, and I want you to put everything back on track where it needs to be because you've been traveling, running, chasing your own life, and now I'm calling you to settle down. I'm preparing. This is not only about you. This is about myself is in, in, in Shelly together, us as a couple, our life. You do realize that we have a life, right? Those of you watching online, stop beating up on your pastor, on your leaders. They have a life just like you do, and you need to be praying for them. You need to be holding them up because you know what real pastors and real leaders do? They hold you up. How many times do we talk about somebody else and it takes over our conversation because we're praying about you, talking about you, wondering how you're doing, wondering if God has blessed you, wondering, want to hear if there's deliverance in your life. Because that's what you do when you become a leader. Okay? Leaders lead. Come on, everybody say leaders lead. And people generally follow. Okay? All right? Now, not all the time because you have sheeps and goats. And I know what a sheep does and I know what a goat does because I own a real goat. And he gets to act like a goat because he is a goat. And he's got horns and he butts and he acts like a fool. Don't, don't laugh too hard because you might get another picture somewhere. <laughs> you might be the goat jumping around out in the field. But that little sheep, that little sheep finds a shepherd's voice, finds the whistle, and all of a sudden you don't have one sheep coming. You have two sheep. You have three. You have five. You have ten. You have fifteen. And that shepherd can take those sheep all across the the fields and, and take them anywhere that they need to go because the sheep, watch now, are following. You got it? If there's anything that this generation is not... It is not a follower of God. It'll follow anything else. You throw anything out on Instagram, and I'll tell you what, Dan, you'll have 500,000 people following it. They don't know what it's about. They don't know who did it. They don't know where it came from. They don't know what the premise is. They don't know whether it's occultic. They don't know whether it's Christian. They don't know nothing. All they know is they liked it. They heard it. It sensed them. And now all of a sudden, they hit the like button. Because that's the generation that we're living in. Now, by the way, this is the generation that Jesus called a chosen generation. Oxymoron, huh? What? Are you kidding me? Yeah, this is what this message is going to be about today. Before you, um, when we get into this message, this message series, the chosen generation, uh, you're going to discover you. You want to discover you, the real you, who God says you are? You're going to discover the times that you're living in. We're also going to talk about some practical application and the urgency to a ready spirit, to a ready spirit. You know, they, I did a, a re reading the other day, and I found out they said that 65% of the people miss their job promotion because they're not ready. They're not ready. Somebody else got it because they were ready. The people that should have got were not ready. They, they wanted preparation to get ready. Listen, let, folks, write this down somewhere. God never gives you permission to prepare to get ready. He said, be ready. And a lot of people, for some reason, think that God's going to give them this major, you know, open, sila moment to just get ready. And that's not how it works with God. And if you've been walking with Him long enough, you'll know that He wants you to, watch now, to be something. He wants you to be ready. Be prepared. Be 
prayerful. Be filled with the Spirit. See how it works? It's, it, it's, it's not, well, I'll do this when I want to do it. I'm, I'm 18 right now. I'll plan to do this when I'm 21. Well, you know, I haven't had kids yet. When I have kids, really going to get serious about church, going to get serious about serving God. That is not how it works because life has a tendency to change. I'll give you one. An accident can change your life on the highway forever. And there's a lot of bitter people that wanted to make the change. They figured out how they were going to do the change, but life changed on them, and now they don't even want to change. And so I want to encourage you that as we go through this, this, this uh, series, that your importance to God is extremely important to the world in which you live. If you can recognize, if I can recognize how important that I am to God and how important I am that He left me here to be born at such a time as this, to live in such a time as this, that I am part, you are part of a chosen, everybody say a chosen generation. And when, I, and when I wrote it down like this, I don't know if Preston and them did it on the slide or not, but I want you to make sure it is the CAPS, chosen generation. It's not the chosen generation. It's the chosen generation. Okay? And we're going to read it this way today out of 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 9. So if you're there, say amen. Three of you, five of you, seven of you. Is it on the board? Uh, no, we're, we're already into the, the points. Here we go. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. 1 Peter 2, 9. I'm reading from the New King James Version. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. Yeah, yeah. Do, do, do you hear some people humming some songs here? You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. You're so out of touch with real good worship music that I'm trying to educate you today. Who has called you out of darkness, out of darkness, out of darkness, into his marvelous light? Hide into his marvelous life. Read it again. You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Now, over the weeks, we're going to break this down, okay? Whether I'm teaching here or somebody else is teaching here, we're going to stay on this series, except Mother's Day, Father's Day. We're going to incorporate that a little bit. But we're going to stay on this because the Lord said to me, the time has come for my people to understand that they are no longer just part of a generation. They're not just part of the financial generation. They're not just part of the technological generation, but more importantly, they are part of the chosen generation. God said before the beginning of the world ever took place, I chose myself a people, and I chose a time, and I chose a segment of their life. And when I pointed out, I'm God, I get to do this, the Lord said, whenever I decide to say, that's the chosen generation, He has the authority he has all supremacy to go ahead and make that decision. And I want to say to you, church, and I want to say to you watching online, you are going to see God get ready when he's doing some things this year. He's just going to do some things because he's God. He doesn't need your opinion, and he doesn't need your, your, your permission. He is just going to do them. And some people are going to be left behind. They'll have to run really fast to catch up with what the Spirit of God is doing. And the babes in Christ will be gathered up by the wings of the Holy Spirit because God will never leave the babies behind. He'll never leave the toddlers in the Spirit behind. He'll never leave. He'll always pick them up like a good father. 
and he'll carry them with you. But for those of you that are strong and mature and those of you that should know how to live, he'll have, you'll have to run and catch up with what God is doing. So you better get your running shoes on. Or you can either get ready. Look at somebody and say, just get ready. Stay ready and get ready. So in this generation, everybody say this generation. In this generation we're living in, it's a very perverse and wicked generation on every corner. Can anybody say amen? Why do you say that, Pastor Rick? Glad you asked the question. No reverence for God. No reverence for God. No reverence for the country. No reverence for the world. No reverence for people. No reverence for anyone with any type of authority. Uh, it's a generation that wears no fear on their sleeve. They basically say this, I will do as I please. I will do whatever satisfies me. I will do whatever I choose to do, and I don't need anybody over me making those decisions. It's a perverse generation, Jesus said, but he has called you and me to this type of generation. So here's the problem with the church. The problem with the church is the church tries to make up an excuse as to why we don't have to deal with a perverse and a wicked generation. Well, we'll we're okay as long as we can go to a concert where there's 10,000 people jumping up and down and praising the Lord. But after the concert, can you take your praise out on the street and minister to somebody else and tell them why the hope is on the inside of you? You are part of the generation. This is not by a, a happenstance. This is not because God missed something. God knew exactly what he was doing. And he set the world up to come to the place of iniquity, to come to this place of, of perverse and this place of, of, of wickedness, this place of darkness. Because Isaiah saw it in Isaiah 61, and he said, Oh, wait a minute. Arise and shine, for your light has come. The glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and darkness, watch now, most people forget about reading verse 2, and darkness shall cover the face of the earth. Well, that means that if you've got the glory in your life, if you've got the Spirit in your life, people are going to know who you are that much more faster. They're going to know exactly your identity, that you're not just an identity with the United States of America or with North Carolina, but more importantly, your identity. Oh, church, your identity is with the kingdom of God. Your identity is with the Lord God himself. Your identity is with the one that you will never be ashamed of. His name is Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, the one resurrected from the dead, and the one that's going to come back and take over with authority and power and ruling. And I'm not one going to be part of the church that goes to sleep. Are you? I'm not going to be part of the church that gets mundane. Are you? I'm not going to be one that just gets a little nonchalant. Well, Jesus is coming back. Praise the Lord. Jesus is coming back. Hallelujah. Jesus is coming back. Amen. No, it's about time that you have a party. It's about time that you recognize what the chosen generation is all about. That God has said, I brought you to a place for such. You're just like Esther standing in the presence of wickedness and perverse and filth and nasty and darkness. You're standing there and God's looking for a church that will stand in the gap and make up the head and say, you are the chosen. Come on, say it with me. I am the chosen generation. You got it? You got it? Now you ask, what's the purpose? Why would God allow me to live in such a time like this? Well, let's, let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Because we that are born again are part of the chosen generation. Two of you, three of you, born again. Okay, yeah. Some of you got something else. I don't know what you got. I don't know what you got from Jesus. I'm trying to figure it out. I'm trying to figure it out. Everybody say this, except a man be born again or born from above. He cannot see the kingdom of God. You can't be part of the kingdom of God. You have to be born again. For that which is born of the water is of the water. But that which is born of the Spirit is of the Spirit. And this is why when you really get saved, the sky becomes bluer, trees become greener, 
And people become more lovable, even the people that you hated before you said yes to Jesus. Your life changes. You become this really crazy, off-the-wall individual. I used to love Toby Mack. I listened to him for years, DC Talk. You become a Jesus freak. You become a Jesus freak. You going to church again? Yeah, you're not. You reading your Bible again? Uh Uh-huh, you didn't read yours. You speaking in that language again? You 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 haven't spoke yet? You allow the world to intimidate you. You watching online? You allow the world to intimidate you with their darkness, their perverseness, their nasty, their filth, their ungodly, their 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 controversial, their, their lack of. Co- you allow them to set a path for you, and you are called to be the light. You are called to be the salt. You are called to be the generation that would watch now show forth the praises of Him. You are a chosen generation a royal priesthood, a holy nation. When are you ever going to wake up and realize who you are? We get on an airplane? Yes, we get on an airplane, and everybody else screams because their destiny is in their own hands. The rest of us keep right on reading. We keep right Shelly, we keep right on talking. We just keep, life just keeps going on. You get stopped in a, in a coup. You get stopped in a, in a place where they say, we're going to take your life. We're going to cut you up. We're going to throw you over in the side of the ditch. You know who you are. You just say, let me tell you something. If he's going to allow you to do it, go ahead and do it. Otherwise, I'm getting in my car and I'm headed down the road. God's people have got to get to a place to where they know who they are. I'm going to show this to you. God doesn't have anything by happenstance. So here's what he says. A generation, a generation of a chosen generation is a generation that has been set free from the bondage of sin. I heard you, Pastor Mike. I was listening to you, Pastor Mike. I heard you, Pastor Mike. He said, you're gifted, you're called, but some of you don't realize you can't do what you're gifted and called to do until you get free from your bondage. Now, the thing you think about bondage, you say, well, wait a minute, I don't do drugs, and I don't drink anymore, and I don't use bad words, and, and here we go, here we go. Down the legalistic path we go. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't. But you don't realize that if you can't forgive somebody, you're in bondage. <laughs> if, if you get offended all the time, because you didn't get counted in, you're in bondage. <laughs> it is good preaching. I know it is. I hear the angels. The angels are applauding me this morning. I, I love you, but I'm listening to them. You're in bondage. And I thought, oh, thank you, Jesus. I didn't have to say it as the pastor. This, this wonderful man came in under the anointing of the Spirit, said a word. I just wonder if the church got a hold of the key and set themselves free. Because you don't have to be in bondage. You can be free. You don't have to be in bondage. You can live in liberty. You don't have to be in bondage. The Holy Spirit has come, right, Joseph, so that you could be set free, so that you would be free from the compliments of men, free from whatever man. You are free to live your life in Jesus. You are, say it, I am a chosen generation. Say it like this, I am. The chosen Mm -hmm. generation. A generation that has been set free. A generation that has been called out by God's Spirit. Not the pastor. Called out by God's Spirit. Not the choir. Not the worship team. Not my favorite group. Not my clique. You've been called out by God's Spirit. Spend more time with God's Spirit. Listen, washed in the blood. Anybody washed in the blood? That's a chosen generation. There you go, you Christians again, talking about that blood. There you go, you sinners again, talking about how bad it is. There you Christians go again, taking communion. There you go again, wrecking your car because you drank something you shouldn't be drinking. When are you ever going to realize who you are? 
and who God called you to be. Cleansed from all the wickedness and the impurities in the name of Jesus. He sees us righteous. Come on. A chosen generation has become God's holy people. A chosen generation is a peculiar people. I like that part. I like that part. I like that part. They're peculiar. Jesus, why are you picking corn on the Sabbath day? Because I'm peculiar. Because I'm different. What was the power of your life, Daniel? A different spirit. Everybody else wanted to eat the meat. Everybody else wanted to dance the dance. Daniel says, no, I think I'll fast and my skin will look like I came out of Hollywood. Read it. It's what it says. His skin was more fairer than anybody in the kingdom. Because once you realize who you are and you're part of this chosen generation, now you realize that you've been separated to a purpose and you are now God's elect. (laughs) Yeah, 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 yeah. The chosen generation. What do we mean by that? Okay, here's two points right here. Write them down. Number one, the revelation of who you are. You'll never, you'll never move from where you are until you realize who you are in him. I'm not talking about through a shouting of a message. I'm not talking about through amen or hallelujah. I'm talking about when you discover in your own private time, when you discover in your own battle, when you discover who you are, who Christ called you to be, there is a revelation that comes on you that when you get a revelation, you know what that means? That means that it's been revealed to you. You don't need somebody else to reveal it to you. You don't need your best friend to do it. You don't need the pastor to do it. You've already been revealed by heaven, and you don't need anybody else to reveal to you you who you are and now you know who you are and now you're turning learning how to do the second part you're learning how to do what live a consecrated dedicated life to him you see it the consecration of how to live now please don't get really quiet on me because we'll have to change the series dynamics and we'll go a different direction because There's no place in this word, this real, true, holy word that tells you you get to live any way you want to live. Yes, I'm saying it. I know it's not popular, but I'm going to say it. In fact, God says, if you love me, you will deny your life and you'll take up the cross and you'll follow me. But I'd like to preach the sweetness of God's Word because I have found out that this book is so good. No wonder they call it the good book. Because it guards me, it protects me, it, it, it shelters me, it, it's my refuge. When I have a, a problem, I get to go to it and get an answer. I mean, his, see, this is the problem. Some of us, we, we, we've traded the book for technology. We traded the book for the phone. We traded, come on. We traded the book for somebody else's knowledge. We traded the book for somebody else's book. The Bible says this. This is what Jesus said about the book. What he said about the annals of Scripture. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will never pass away. Amen? I'm just going to do a little old-fashioned preaching. Some of you ought to have a Bible. I tell you, my Bibles, I can't even put them together. They, They fall apart on me. But I have so many notes in here, and everybody's like, oh, Pastor Rick, I got you a new Bible for your birthday. It's almost like, thank you, no thank you. Uh, okay, all right, thank you. I've got to be nice. i got to be nice. Nice, Pastor. Okay, guess what I've got to do? I've got to go through every page and highlight every scripture and all my notes and everything. Pastor Rick, you don't do that. Listen, the Bible says, thy word is very pure, therefore thy servant loves it. Are you kidding me? There's something about the notes 
and the scriptures and underlining and the Holy Spirit talking to you. Uh, some of you, I'm talking, I'm talking some brand new language to some of you because you're waiting on somebody else online to say it for you, to preach it for you, to write it for you, to give you a slide. You're never going to catch a revelation with somebody else's revelation. You got to catch your own revelation of who you are and you'll catch that revelation by discovering who he is. Amen, Joseph. I'm preaching your message. When you discover who he is, now you discover who you are. His word says I'm healed. His word says I'm delivered. His word says I'm the head and not the tail. His word says I'm going to put the devil underneath my feet. His word says I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus. His word says that I can get into a boat and God will protect me. His word said, are you listening to me? That's the chosen generation. That's the chosen generation. The revelation of who you are, the consecration of how to live. Now, everybody wants to be chosen. You remember this story? Everybody wants to be chosen. You remember this story in high school? Were you, were you the one? I was when I was an unqualified football player. <laughs> you know, you, you pick the best of the best, and they're the captains, Right? There's a captain over here and a captain over here. Come on. Now, don't you guys get really spiritual with me, or I just have to call you out. But here's the captain, and the captain said, all right, you pick first. And he says, all right, let's see. Uh, I know who one of the best athletes in here. Hey, yeah, I want Dustin on my team. And you're, and you're back over there, and you're back over there, and you're like, pick me, pick me. And the guy says, you can't catch a football. No, no, pick me. I want to be on your team. I want to be on your team. Choose me. Choose me. Choose me. Choose me. Now, how many of you know what I'm talking about? That you were the last ones. And the captain says, <laughs> the captain says, who's left? Listen, listen to the negativity of the word. Who is left? Who do I have to take on my team? That is not the chosen generation. The chosen generation is the ones whom God said, I want you all on my team. But you remember, you want to be chosen. You want to be chosen for the promotion. You want to be chosen at work. You want to be chosen to be recognized. You want your kids to be chosen on the football, on the baseball team. It is something that God has put on the inside of all of us. We all want to be recognized. We all want to be chosen. So what does it mean to be chosen? Well, let me give it to you. First of all, you have to make a choice. It's... I, could, I tried to find another way to say it. But you have to make a choice between Jesus or Satan. That's where it begins. Which team are you going to play on? Who do you want to be your captain? By the way, are you going to quit the team because the team is losing the ball game? Or are you going to support the captain and stay on the team? It really begins there. I don't know why the preachers are not preaching it. They're preaching everything else. They're all around it, beating around the bush, over here up against the wall, all over here in some, I don't know where they are. But when in the world are the preachers going to tell you that you've got to make a choice in life? It's Jesus or Satan. Why? Where do you get that from, Pastor Rick? Why are you so passionate about that? Because Jesus said, you've got to choose between him or the God of this world. You can't serve Belial and serve God. You can't serve Satan and serve Jesus. You can't walk in the Holy Spirit and walk in the spirit of the devil. You can't do it. You have to make a choice. You know why? We've come to a generation that doesn't want to deal with choice, do they? They don't want to make a choice. Okay, could I just make a choice and could it just include everybody? Everybody. Hello, everybody. I'm your pastor this morning. I just want to let you know that I'm heterosexual, homosexual, inosexual, up and sexual, and I'm all of them. I want you to make everybody receive me this morning. Amen. And I want you to know that I'm rich and I'm poor and I'm also middle class. Amen. I'm married, I'm divorced, and I'm separated, and I also have concubines. 
I have children of my own. I know where they are. I have other children. I don't know where they are. And I have children. They tell me that I have had children. I don't, but, but I have children. And I just want you to know that I am the pastor for all ages. I'm the pastor for all people. I'm the pastor. Just everybody come in here. I mean, we serve an awesome, powerful, mighty God. He doesn't care how you live, what you do, what you think. It just, just everybody come into this utopia of wickedness. Well, that's the, that's the lie that this world is believing. Because your Bible says you cannot serve Lord Satan and Lord Jesus at the same time. So it begins. Okay? Now hang on with me. Hang with me. I'm going to move this up. So it's Jesus or Satan. It's the kingdom or the world, making a choice. Are you a fan or are you a follower? Are you a fan or are you a follower? Who, or are you just a fan? Jesus, you're going to feed us today? Yay, Jesus, yay. Jesus, you're going to bless my bank account? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jesus, where are you going? Jesus, you're going into danger. Jesus, it's uncertain where you're going. I don't think I want to follow you anymore. You're not a follower. You're a fan. We read a book years ago called Fan or Follower. You need to read that. Go get it online. Change your life. I'm not a fan. I'm a follower. I am a follower of Jesus. You should be a follower of Jesus Christ. Now watch this. I wanted to demonstrate how easy it was to follow Jesus and where this series came from. There's a movie series out called The Chosen, right? Hello? Okay, I just want to make sure you're still here. The Chosen, okay? So when I saw that you are the chosen generation, I said, God, the chosen. So that's why you're working with this movie and the generation by which we are living because you're trying to wake your church up to help them realize they're the chosen generation. So, what does it mean to follow Jesus? I want to show you how simple it is. Ready? On the screen. You ready to roll it? Here we go. Watch.
cry for me. I am a sinful man. You don't know who I am in the name of God. There it is. You can cut it. You can cut it. You cut it. You get the story? You check it out? Huh? What does Peter say? Peter says like we say in life, you know what, Lord? I got this. I got this. In fact, wait a minute, Jesus. You evidently have forgotten that I am a professional. I am a professional fisherman. Okay? And the Lord is trying to get our attention so that he could take us to a higher level of knowing who we are. And watch now, watch now. So here's the qualification that Jesus gives. And it hasn't changed since then. When Jesus, it's called the law of first mention. Remember, I'll teach this to you sometime. It's the law of first mention. Jesus opens his mouth and he gets ready to call forth his disciples. And here's the way he's going to do it. Because whatever way he does it, he must do it the same way again. Because he's a just God. He's a faithful God. He is a fair God. There is no respect of persons with Jesus. And here's the way that he does it. He says this, can you, can you, wait a minute. Peter says, you don't understand. I'm a man, uh, I have failed you. My, my brother is more qualified than I am. He's the baptizer. You don't understand. I am a man, I am a sinful man. I've got a dark past. You don't know what's happened to me. You don't know what my pedigree's like. You don't know what my genealogy's like. Jesus, you don't need me. You can't use me. And Jesus responds back with the way that he says these words to every one of you sitting in this building today, me and you the same. Follow me. This is the deciding factor of the chosen generation. There are some who are going to make the decision that no matter what Christ asked them to do, no matter what Jesus is saying to you in your life, you're going to come to the place to where you're going to stop making excuses. You're going to stop pointing to the past. You're going to stop pointing to your failures. You're going to stop making up excuses, and you're going to realize that here's all he wants to know. Can you Follow me. That's it. That's it. Pastor, I want to be a leader in the church. Here's what I would like to ask you. Can you follow what the Lord is doing? What is church all about? What are you sitting here in this building, in this pew all about today? Following the Lord. Following the Lord. And here's what he's asking you. Can you just follow me? Because that is the prerequisite to walking with Jesus. Just follow me. I know you're going to make up all kinds of excuses and reasons. You can talk about your past. You can talk about your failure. You can talk about the family you were raised in. You can talk about your mom and your dad, your abuse. You can go on and on and on and on and on and on and on. And when you finish, you are going to hear the voice of Jesus himself saying, do you want to follow me? Because that is the chosen 
It's the chosen. It's the generation that makes the choice. The chosen generation. Now, I have to have Scripture to back this up. So as I'm coming to a close, we have to have Scripture to back it up. Look at somebody and say, we have to have the Word. So before you, when you go back to 1 Peter 2, 9, let's not read too fast, okay? Because here's what most preachers want to go. But you're a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy. Wait a minute. Let's slow it down. And let's look at that word. But you are. But. Now, if you go back and you read the very first of the chapter, it says you need to lay aside malice and hatred and bitterness and anger and divisions and all these things that try to overcome you. And Peter comes back and says, you know, you're serving Christ, the cornerstone, the unmovable stone. He is the one. He's the one the builders rejected. He's the one that no one thought he was who he was, but he's the one who rose from the dead. He's the one who died for your sins. And now you've been transformed into his life. And now I will remind you, you, I know you're going to give me an excuse, but I know you're going to excuse yourself, but you got, how many of you know sometimes you have to keep your butt in your way? But, watch now, you are. You are, say it with me, I am a follower of Jesus Christ. But you are the chosen generation. Somebody's getting it. But you are, but you are, but you are the chosen generation. How in the world could God use somebody who's been abused? Because they have made a decision to follow him. How could somebody be used who has really hurt other people? They've, they've done all kinds of sin because they have made him Lord. And they said, I will follow you. I'm not a fan of you. So I don't come and go, come and go. I'm a follower. Wherever you go, I go. Wherever thou sittest, I sit. Wherever you lay, I lay. Wherever you eat, I eat. Wherever you drink, I drink. Wherever you think, I think. Whatever you say, I say. I have become a part of you. So no wonder the world's all messed up today because the church is looking for the church. The church is not looking to become a chosen generation. The church is looking to see who's going to be the next powerhouse preacher. They're looking to see who's going to be the next big church. They're looking to see what's going to be the next movement. They're looking to see who's going to fill up the next coliseum the most. They're not looking to become the chosen generation. He said, you are the chosen generation. You're chosen. Now, I'll show this to you really fast. If you're under the age of 40, would you stand, please? We're closing. Give me a musician. We're closing. Or give me the musicians. We're closing. I don't know where they are. I think they're out there having coffee or donuts or whatever. But we'll. Are they here? You know, sometimes when you're doing a message, you have to put a foundation in. Sometimes you just walk away and you walk away with a little serpy word and you walk out. I, I have a mission today. You are to discover that you are a chosen generation. Those of you watching online, you're the chosen generation. Okay, now, if you're under the age of 40, I need you to stand. Okay? You're under the age of 40. Anybody else out there? Make sure they're not playing. Okay. No, 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 no. Now, now if you're under the age of 40... Let me tell you as I'm coming to a close. When the Lord spoke to me in 2007 and said, what I sent you through, you're never going to figure out. Boy, was he so right. You'll never figure this out. You'll never understand the transitions and the changes that I have for you in your life. You'll never, you'll never get it. But all I need you to do, I can't preach this message to you without modeling the message. 
I just need you to follow me, Rick. It's going to get dark and dreary. It's going to be great, successful. It's going to be painful. You're going to feel like you're going to die. There's going to be times I'm going to resurrect you. And life will just come out of no place. But here's what I want from you. I want you to give me the commitment that no matter what happens, you'll follow me. That was easy. I'm going to heaven. Y'all going to heaven? 17 of you. God bless you. I said, are you going to heaven? Well, you're not going to heaven following somebody else. You're going to heaven following Jesus and being this chosen generation. Because I know you're living in wickedness and I get that. But if you're under the age of 40, I need you to stand. Okay? Now, Joseph, nice try. All right? So if you're under the age of 40, I'm going to, under 40, I'm going to ask you to come right down here and just stand right here. Just come and stand real quick. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Just just stand right over here. I'm not going to do any. This 40, you're not. Okay, Denny, take a break. Come out from behind there and come down here, please. I got I to gotta show you this. I got to show it to you. No, you're, 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 you're over the age of 40, so you're out here. Nice try, Denny. Nice try. When, when the Lord called me to start Free Church, I knew that the church would outlive me. I knew it. I just knew it in my spirit. I shared it with Shelly when I first met her. I said, church is going to go on. You go on without me. Now listen to me. Pay, pay attention. Stay with me. Stay with me. Come here. Come here. Stay with me. I need you to listen to me. Stay with me. I knew the church would outlive me. And I knew there would come a place in my own personal life, hopefully my wife would join with me and run this cause. And she is. Though you look at me as your pastor, you can never separate us. And as I knew that this was happening, the Lord began to speak to me. He's being, He's began to swell my spirit. And He said this to me. Here's what He said to me. He said, do you understand that I have documented in my word that a generation is 40 years? So those under 40 I want, you to sh- I want you to show those of you that are over 40, okay, and those of you that are under 40, that if the under 40 were to go away, if they were to walk out the door today, because we say to them, this is what we say in the church, well, she's not teaching a class, and I mean, she, her, Lacey's not counting the money, and she's not preaching on Sunday morning. So she's a good little church member. I mean, she sings on, on Sunday morning, but that's it. That, she's just a good little church member. All you guys just good little church members. Just thank you. Just keep on coming. Keep wearing your pretty dresses and do all that stuff. Let me tell you something. If you guys were to go away, walk, walk forward this way. Walk forward this way. Walk this way. Come on. Yeah, I knew her more of it. I knew her more of it. Yeah. And the newest one. And the newest one. Look at Denny trying to get up here as best he can because he's got talent in his arms. All right, Denny, come on. Come on. Come on. I'm your shepherd. All right, I want you to look around. I want you to look around because without this new generation, this is the church. This is the church. This is it. This is it. 
How many of you out here will realize, will raise your hand and tell me with you, you complain too much? Just raise your hand when you complain. How many of you complain a lot about your finances? Just raise your hand. Be honest. And how many of you get really sour sometimes? You don't even want to come to church. Come on, just raise your hand. Thank you. Thank you. Even the pastor's wife. Thank you. Now, how many of you guys up here just enjoy life? I mean, just have just. I mean, you, you love it when the service is long. You love it when the service is short. When the music's loud. I mean, you just, just love it. Because this is a chosen generation. They're learning how to walk. You're under 30. You're under 40. Under 40. Do you see it? Do you see it? Now, here's, here's where I'm going to close the message. Okay, you ready? Here's where I'm going to close it. Because as the Lord spoke to me, and He said, the church will outlive you. And what your job to do, and what the leaders in this house, I'm going to say this to you, what the leaders called by God in this house, you'll know you're a leader. Because what the leaders are called to do in this house is to get that generation ready to do the work of the Lord. That, that's, that's the assignment, to get them ready. And this is why, this is why I've been working with, with, with Preston, because let me say, tell you something about this generation. They're faster than you are. They, 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 they can last longer than you can. They think faster. They talk faster sentences than you do. When they get on the computer, they wear you out. They, they, they leave you in the dust. When they text somebody a message, you're like, peck, peck, peck. They're like, tick, 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 boom, over. Because this is a chosen generation. Are you watching online? This is a chosen generation. Stop looking at them as just they're going to Sunday school. Stop looking at them as that they just need another class. Stop looking at them as like they're just going to be good little church members. These are your future leaders of the church. They are the chosen generation. Now, you ready for your part? We're the older guys. Let the older guys say, yeah! yeah. Let the young generation say, woo! Yeah. I told you, they're going to beat us every single time. Watch me now. Watch this. When God came to Joshua, he said, Joshua, Joshua's a young man. He said, Joshua, be strong and have a good courage. And Joshua said this in his spirit. Lord, I am strong, and I do have courage. We're the only two that came back with a report and said, we'll take the land, we'll take the Philistines, we'll take the giants. There's no problem. With God, we'll do it all. I am strong, and I've got courage. That's this generation over here. They're not afraid of nothing. They're not afraid of anything. They do some crazy stuff. They'll get inside of a, a car doing 120 going down I-40 and go, woo! Ben said, so what? He will too. <laughs> but let, let me stay here. Let me stay here. So say this with me. You're the strength. Say, we are the strength. You are. You'll outlast us. You'll outrun us. You'll out-text us. You'll out-email. You, you can do it all. What's, what's, what's now? What's now? But you need these old people out here because how many of you know the way? Are you with me? How many of you know the way? How many of you know the way to prayer? You know the way to victory. You know the way to bind the devil. You know the way to outlive what's coming against you. You know the way to being an overcomer. You know the way to serve Jesus when it's good and when it's bad. You're trying to figure it out. You're trying to figure it out. So if you will be our strength, you let us show you the way. And when you take the strength 
in the way, you have the chosen generation. Now you have the Daniels and the Deborahs and the Esthers and the Joshuas. You have all the spiritual men and women that God is raising up. And now you're not looking for a title anymore. And this is where I'm going to preach to you guys. I'm, I do not want you guys to walk in here like you're waiting for them to show you how to worship. I want you to worship like you, like you want to worship. Because, see, I remember in my day when there was a young guy that got saved, he used to he'd worship God like that. <laughs> he started running around. He'd run all over the building. He was so happy with God until he got around some of us. And now he goes like this. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Because they're going to become what you model in front of them. So you're part of the generation. And you have the responsibility to help lead them in the way. Stop looking to the pastor to do that. Stop looking to just a couple of leaders to do that. When are you going to rise up to your God-given potential and help them in their strength? Show them the way. Amen. The chosen generation. The chosen generation. We are the chosen generation. Before we go to royal priesthood, a holy, we must understand who we are. So stop acting like you don't know who you are and start walking in here. I'm hoping that God raises up some preaching machines in here, some teaching machines. There's going to be some more worshipers in here. There's going to be some teachers. They're going to be teaching children. Some of you are going to be multimillionaires because God's going to trust you in this chosen generation to put His riches in your hand. You're going to need us to sort of help. You're going to need the guy in the back because he's an accountant. And when you start making millions of dollars, he's going to show you how to not lose it all. Because you don't know how to do all that. You're going to need somebody to show you the way. We have other people in here that have experience with children. And when you start having babies and you think you're going to lose your mind, you need to get around a seasoned mama because they'll show you how to make it through that midnight hour. You're the strength. We know the way. We need you to be our strength. You need us to show you the way. Amen? All right, I'm finished. I'm finished. Come on, let's stand up. What are you singing? The sun sets free. The sun sets you free. Oh, it's free and I'm a child of God. I'm, I'm a child, child of God. Yes, I am. Yes, yes, I am. am. In my Father's house, there's a place for me. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. One more time. Through the sunset's free. Oh, it's free indeed. I'm a child.
Justin and Tara right now, there's all kind of stuff we're going to be doing on apps. We're going to give you every single opportunity you need to be successful and walk with God. But you're going to have to make the choice. It's going to be Jesus or it's going to be Satan. It's going to be darkness or it's going to be light. And I know you're going to make the right choice because you're strong. You're calm. You're anointed. You're the chosen generation. 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 Come on, ready? Because I am chosen, not forsaken. said you can do it. Can you do it? Can you do it? Can you do it? Will you do it? Can you do it? Will you do it? Are you able to do it? Can you do it? Will you do it? Will you do it? Can you do it? Will you do it? Can you do it? Will you do it? That is what God needs from a generation to make a difference. He needs passion. You are, you are, you are, you are not broke. You are a chosen generation. Amen? I'm done. I'm done. Yes. It's over with. I'm done. Hallelujah. Stop walking around here like you're defeated. Start walking around here like you are the chosen generation. I tell you what, I am a chosen generation. I am a royal priesthood. I am a holy nation. I'm a peculiar people. I show forth the praises of my God. He has called me out of darkness into his light. And if you'll come with me, I'll take you out of darkness and bring you into his light. That's the chosen generation. We're finished.